Okay, so we're looking at the charging system for the Nissan Leaf. We have two connectors. The one that's open on the right hand side is for what we would determine as normal charging. That is to say that if the car had to stop on street and connect to a charging post, this is the connector that would be used. The next connector on the left will be used for quick charging. Quick charging allows the car to reach back up to 80% of its full charge within 20 minutes. These types of charges will be found on motorway services or in the petrol retail outlets and of course will be available from some of our own dealers for us. Okay, yep. so you're now looking at the interior of Leaf which is the very same as any other five-door family hatchback. Mm -hmm. Steering wheel would be as normal, controls are as normal, with possibly the exception of the gear stick. As the car has no gearbox, the gear shift that's put there is really not to alienate any new drivers using electric vehicles. But as you can see, it's a very simple operation. It's got an electronic handbrake. That's okay. the uh, charging point over there by the by the door. That's right. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Um, okay. Okay. So if you put your foot on the foot brake, yeah, please. Okay. So. And it's, there's a button down on your just on your left hand there. There is that. Yeah, if you just press that in for a moment, and now the car is started. It's now ready to go. Did I hear it do a little sort of uh, sound effect like an engine starting? No, no, no. I mean, there's just there's some little mechanical devices that are operating there. We're not. Oh, okay. Not, I, I thought it was a little sound effect like an engine we starting. We have got some other sound effects yeah. to it. Yeah. And um, we have a whoosh noise, which a whoosh tells, noise. tells pedestrians that the car is approaching them. Because if we left oh, it completely right. silent, it would be dangerous for yeah. you know people who have hearing issues, mm -hmm. or uh, of course for the blind as well. Yeah. Right? So this is this is an externally emitted sound. That's right. Oh, and right. It's artificially added to the car. Right. Okay. Um, it, okay. It is possible to increase the volume and decrease the volume, or indeed turn it on or right. off. Right. New regulations will be brought in to govern all that right. uh, by the Road Safety Authority. Right. But it's not just any old whoosh noise. There was a lot of money spent by Nissan mm. to develop a noise that would be audible within different hearing thresholds. Right. So children, for instance, hear the different threshold to adults. Mm -hmm. People with hearing disabilities who are using aids also hear a different range of frequencies than those that have a disability but aren't mm -hmm. using aids. Yeah. So, and the other thing is that given that a busy urban environment, there will be noise pollution from a lot of other sources. Mm -hmm. So it had to be something that would stick out. Okay. So something that would enable somebody to identify this is a car approaching you. Mm -hmm. And while initially people probably won't be able to identify the noise immediately as being a car, mm. as electric vehicles become more popular, yeah. that noise will be as familiar know, to people as, as, as an normal. engine, okay, as, right, as yeah. a combustion exactly. engine. Yeah. If you want to press OK on the screen, it's just an agreement really into that you're using the sat nav system, yes. and you'll see that the car has now detected exactly where it is. And the little flag that it's showing you there is a sign that it's beside a charging point. Oh, okay, yeah. So you have a couple of menus there on your right hand side. You have map, menu and status. So mm -hmm. status will tell you about the power that the car is currently using and has available. And if there's regenerative braking taking place, or you're coasting and putting power back into the engine, it'll, lock, it'll or back into the battery, I should say. It'll yeah. give you all of those readings back there. Okay. So if free to press any of those buttons, which you see fit, okay. mm -hmm. um, the, the, it will always bring it back out to a main screen anyway. Oh, okay. Yeah. So if you want there, say update station. So <clears throat> under normal circumstances, that this car is now connecting back to the information database to say, even if the charging station only opened yesterday, yeah. it will be here now. So you just select no there. Which is yeah. And then if you press menu, now uh, on your right hand side there's three silver buttons. You see them on the edge of the outside the edge of the screen. Oh here, yeah. Okay. Right. So your destination, your route are very similar to any other sat nav system. Mm -hmm. Information then if you want to press that one is slightly different. So you've got your normal traffic information, but the most advantageous one I suppose is energy Energy's information. Yeah. If you press that one. Okay. So it's telling you there and the great thing about this system is that it's in real time. So it's telling you about the information that you've used. And it can also tell you what you've used. So if you press energy used, you can 
see that the climate control has used 1.5 kilowatts. Yeah. Other devices have used probably roughly around 0.2 of a kilowatt. Mm -hmm. And on the left hand side of that display screen, well, it's not lit now because we're not um, we're not using any power. We're not moving. Yeah. It's telling you what the motor is what using. the motor is using. Mm -hmm. right. And you can also see that it's giving you a suggestion to say that if you turned off your climate control, you could further your range by a further 38 miles. Oh, big difference. There is, yeah. So, right. you've got a history usage button there as well, yeah. which there's probably very, yeah, the car yeah. hasn't been running, so it's probably very different in there. Yeah, fantastic. But you can see how it works. And then again, back in things like the map, there's, if you go into menu again, right. yeah, okay, there's shoot information again. And if you press charging station info, okay. so near current location, near, near your current location. So what the car will do is it'll always search for charging station that's within reach, mm. with the driving range that you have left. Mm -hmm. All right, and it'll start to give you the nearest one and then move outwards from that. So you always give you the greatest chance to reach there they're getting down into really really low power feet. So it's pointing out that there's one zero yards from us basically yeah, across yeah, the way yeah, there. Uh, there. One two point one miles that's right. Nine point seven miles Neveston West, fifty eight miles uh N ten Dublin Road. So interesting. That's mm. it. And I mean when the new um charging point went up in Cork, no sorry in Galway, mm. we happened to have the car out on the road and literally that afternoon we pressed update charging stations, lo and behold, there appeared oh, okay. the charging station. Yeah. Oh, we had found it already. All right, good. Mm -hmm. Excellent. You see, a lot of that stuff now is about the actual settings for normal driving in terms of yeah. the cars, yeah. so that it happens to be all done by touchscreen. Right. It's got flu full Bluetooth as well, which means you, your phone can be controlled by the touchscreen mm -hmm. and, and by your steering wheel there, so you don't have to take your eyes off the road to do mm -hmm. it. So you can see your phone interrupt button on the left hand side there for taking your calls. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, right. and obviously just the volume of your radio, your phone calls also there. Right. Mm -hmm. And the other great thing about this car, considering the amount of extras that it has, what would be extras in a normal car, it has them as standard, is cruise control on your right hand side there Richard. Yep. So those silver buttons there allow you to set your cruise speed. Now the great advantage of that with an electric car is that if you tell the motor that you only want to do, let's say for argument's sake, 85k. Yeah. It's got to find the most efficient way of maintaining that speed throughout your journey. It also makes it very easy for you to drive. You don't have to keep worrying about keeping up with, you know, the natural flow of traffic and decelerating and accelerating all the time. Yeah, yeah. You get a very, very, very smooth journey, but more more importantly, you get a very efficient journey. Okay. Um, then down on your right-hand side, if you look, there's a couple of buttons down there that say AC timer, one of them should say, and I think the other one is power picture of a plug I think on it. And oh yeah, yeah. Okay, so they're the buttons that we were talking about earlier on. You have a number of ways of setting the car up for charging. You can pre-program it to always come on charge at a certain time. So in other words, you can bring it to a post, say it's at your home, mm -hmm. and plug it in. But the charging won't start until night rate electricity is available. Right. So again, it's saving you more money and you can pre-program all of those states into the car. And as you were saying, um, you can program it to turn itself on in the morning, mm -hmm. or and while it's still on charge, uh, use that use that power from the mains rather than its storage battery power to That's actually it. bring the to bring the temperature of the car up to to a uh, comfortable. Yes, temperature. exactly. And therefore, you're starting off a full range. Um, if you press open tilt, I mean, it's just that the screen will rise up, and the, if you wanted to see where the CD player is, it's just all right. Excellent. So, so in there, yeah. if you press it again, it'll just. Okay, so at the moment this is your charging kit. This end here would be mm. the end that connects into the car. Yeah. And this end here would go into your charging post. Right. Okay. This particular one also has this box on it which will show you that the car is charging, it's ready, or if indeed there's a fault with the power supply or with the unit itself, it'll light up. But the final edition version will obviously be quite different to this. The main reasons for that I've already uh, outlined to you is that in order to have in order to have tamper proof cabling um, in our end there will be a little mm. clasped 
in here that will lock, a little bar that will lock it into its charging area so it can't be just easily removed by somebody else. Just one little additional extra that's available as an option, which is a sm very small solar panel in the roof. Now, we're not trying to fool anybody by saying that this if a solar panel this small could actually make a major contribution to the car. But what it will do, it will give some very tiny assistance maybe to power that's being used by the climate control air conditioning system. But mostly what it does is that it introduces the idea of solar panels on automobiles to the public in general. And it makes people start thinking about using the roof panels as an alternative source of power.